tech journalist, and I guarantee we'll be here in perfect audio. Dan, morning. <laughs> Good morning. I don't know about perfect audio, but certainly sometimes technology isn't as godlike as people presume, let's be fair. Yeah, we're just playing with the gods of tech this morning, aren't we? How has the tech world received this news, Dan? Well, you know, as, as the other Dan was just saying, you know, the, the European law has brought this in, um, and it's not just to Apple because they were working out that it would save consumers about two hundred and fifty million pounds uh, to bring this law in. And of course, as you rightly said, it's something that we've all wanted to happen for a very, very, very long time. We've all been wanting this to happen, and uh, and it's great that it has done. So we've got to applaud Apple for doing so. Whether they only did that because of European law, I'm not a hundred percent sure. You know, it's a multi-trillion-dollar uh, business, and uh, it is. 1.5 billion people that have iPhones and those kind of devices. So it's, you know, it's the biggest tech company in the world. So it is pretty powerful. And it, and it kind of had resisted making this move for a very long time. I don't think it's just about the financial side of things and just about the legal side of things, if I'm honest. Because if you look at it, they actually started not giving people charges with their new phones as well. So it's an interesting move by Apple, but I think it's more to do with data, if the truth be known, and also to do with the future. Of course, as a tech futurologist, I would say this, but yeah. that's it to do with. And I really want to dig in with you about what the future of charging might be in just a second. Daniel's back with us now, I think. We've got the line sorted to him, so let's plug in again with Daniel Thomas, business reporter. Yeah, yeah Daniel, you're back with us now, OK? Sorry, yes, I am, yeah, pardon yeah, no, pr no problem. Why did we end up with so many options for charging around tech? You know, I was saying 33 cables just from Apple alone at one point. How did we end up in that crazy, tangled mess? Well, I mean, I think um, Apple has been a particular offender in, in, the, in this regard. Um, all of the other major uh, smartphone pr providers use a uh, USB-C uh, cable, which is the universal standard, but Apple has always sort of had a, a pretty clo closed loop approach to innovation. Uh, you know, to you, you know, when you buy an Apple, you buy into their ecosystem. It's not just the device; it's all the other things they offer, like their operating system, cloud services. Um, you know, their views that you know that's you know, tightly integrated makes things work better. But I mean, there just wasn't really a case for that with with their charger. Um, uh, you know, cynics would say. You know, Apple's probably more interested in, in keeping things proprietary and locking consumers in. So I think that's partly why the EU has, has made this move and, and forced Apple's hand. They'll be concerned, presumably, against other tech companies that they're now at a bit of a disadvantage about making this move. Well, I mean, I, I think... Um, I'm, not, I'm not so sure about that. I, I think it's... I think it's more uh, going to benefit consumers um, because you know y you're going to you're going to not need so many uh, chargers. You can use the same charger to, to charge your you know Apple uh, laptop or, or iPads, which which by the way are already using uh, USB-C cables. You'll be able to use the same charging point that you can use with for your phone. So that's that's a benefit. It's less hassle, saves you money, and then I mean. The EU believes there's a waste angle to this. You know, all of these, uh, this tangle of, of charging cables we have, you know, often they'll end up in landfill and that creates, that creates waste. Although I should say many campaigners uh, disagree with that and they say, well, now Apple has made this move, we're going to have tons of discarded lightning charger cables in the future, which are also going to end up in landfill. So, uh, you know, it, it's a difficult one. I've got the most difficult question for you this morning, Daniel, as a BBC business reporter. Why do they always end up so tangled? <laughs> that I can't act, uh, answer. I, I can't see a, 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 profit, knows. a profit motive for it, but, uh, you know, there must be a reason. Um, Daniel, stay with me. Dan Sodergren, a uh, tech journalist who's with us this on, uh, on this subject. The least tech thing, Dan, about tech is actually the charging cable, isn't it? What do you think the future is going to look like for our devices? Where are we going to go with all this stuff in time? Well, yeah, of course, this is the whole beauty of the futurism and uh, being a futurist myself. Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing about the, uh, the USB and C is that it's actually quite important from a data point of view. The other Daniel was rightly saying, you know, so if, you, if you've got everything the same, it's actually going to be better for consumers, yes, but it's also going to be better for transferring of data as well. And this is the really interesting thing. The new headset that Apple's brought out and bringing out, um, which, you know, virtual reality and these are all these other kind of things, you know, it's got a chip in it that can actually use artificial intelligence and all this other stuff, that will use the same charger as well. But actually, you'll then be able to transfer the stuff from your phone much quicker into your laptop and much quicker into this new headset. And this is where it gets very exciting because, as 
tiny bit that they talked about in the Apple release was the uh, the ability of this new phone to do spatial photos. Now, you should really have a think about this in the future, because this is what will happen, but mark my words. You'll be able to take these photos now, but in a couple of years' time, when you've got this headset, you'll be able to then look at these photos that you can take on your brand new phone, and you'll be able to walk through the photos themselves. So it's a completely new way of taking uh, doing photos and photography. So that's why Apple have really done it. It's about data transfer, not just saving consumers money, and not just you know not just uh, bowing to EU, uh, EU law. So they are being very clever with the innovations here. They just haven't really announced it massively. But mark my words, as a futurist, that is what's going to be happening in the future. And are we going to get to the stage eventually, Dan, where you can just charge a phone up by you know putting it next to your laptop or by putting it next to a domestic PowerPoint or something? like that or are we always going to be cabled and tied because of that data transfer well i think yeah because of the data transfer part yeah absolutely but at the same time you know there are wireless charges right now you know and i think sometimes we've got to be I, i'm a kind of not necessarily against them but i think you can have innovations for innovation's sake and actually you could put ourselves into a, in a slightly more dangerous position because of this whole idea of getting rid of cables and getting rid of wires so even though you know i love technology to advance i actually think it's probably a little bit safer that we don't you know have everywhere possible to charge your phone everywhere all the time because i actually i may have a feeling that underneath all that that's most probably an innovation which is based on human beings being maybe a bit too lazy i hate to say it um i know we do that we don't like the fact that they always tangle up and yeah that's most probably one of the things they should they should do first is find out how to make a table that never unwinds or gets tangled up but i think that might actually be impossible but yeah yeah well we, we know from christmas tree lights that that is not not easy <laughs> and do, do, are other technology i mean we've talked about one company particularly here this morning but other co- companies likely to follow the lead on this and see much more standardization around key and around charging. Well, again, without being uh, rude to Apple, and I'm not an Apple fanboy either, but I mean, I'm agnostic when it comes to phones. I've got, I've got quite a few. So, you know, Huawei and other people have all have been doing this for a very, very long time. So it's not new to them. They've been very efficient with all this for, I'd say, a very long time. However, Apple, as the other gentleman's right said, it, it looks like sometimes they want to close the loop and use innovation, but sometimes it's more to do with money. So we can't really angle that with the rest of the community and the mobile phones and, and laptops, because actually everyone's been doing very, very well using the same ones. So, uh, you know, it's only Apple that's been a bit naughty. Uh, Daniel, what's going to happen to our, our 33 different uh, Apple chargers that would uh, that many people have got sitting around in, in drawers? Are they going to become collector's items in time for the Apple geeks? <laughs> yeah, oh, I mean, um, you know, uh, there's a huge Apple resale market. So, you know, continents like uh, Africa... Uh, Asia, you know, these these um, uh, cables that we have, you know, they, they may end up being resold overseas. Um, but yeah, there are concerns also that um, a lot of these a lot of these cables could end up in in landfill eventually. And there was some criticism of Apple um, in, after its launch um, this week. Uh, people commented, look, it hasn't launched a recycling program for Lightning cables. It, it announced a, a bunch of other kind of environmental pledges about its new devices, but it, no solution for the e-waste aspect of this. So, um, yeah, that's a bit of an open question right now. Watch this space. Daniel Thomas, BBC Business Reporter. Thanks so much for your time, Daniel. And Dan Sodergren, tech journalist. Thank you as well.